My first job in the radio was uh, at Magic 98 in North Muskegon. And I, f I first became interested in radio when I was like eight years old. We had a job fair at Twin Lake Elementary. People came in. Well, it wasn't a job fair. It was a career day. And uh, people came in and they were telling us about their jobs, what they did for a living. A couple guys came in from WMUS. They set up a couple of record players and they talked and they said, this is what we do. And we talked between the records and stuff. And I thought that would be cool to do for a living. So ever since I was eight years old, I wanted to be on the radio. So my education kind of went downhill from there because I thought, you know what? I'm not going to need to know how to type. I'm not going to need... I, biggest mistake I made in high school was not applying for speech class in time. So the speech class filled up. I couldn't get into speech class to learn how to publicly speak. So I had to learn on my own, teach myself, get laughed at. I dropped out of typing class because I thought, I'm going to be on the radio. What am I going to need to know how to type for? Every day. Every day I sit in front of one of these things. So, yeah. Learn how to type, kids. Okay. But then I started... Uh, I was working at Holiday Skate Center. A buddy of mine said, hey, a friend of mine is working part-time at uh, Magic 98 up in North Muskegon. You ought to go apply. He's heading off to college. They're going to have an opening part-time. So I went and applied. I basically just walked into the place and what do I have to do to get a job here? He said, put a demo tape together and uh, get a resume together, drop it off, and we'll let you know what we think. So I did that. I went home. I recorded. I cut stuff out of the news, like, articles or ads out of the newspaper and just ad-libbed them on tape with music playing in the background off the radio and it was a real crude demo tape and a resume that was basically a paper route garbage route and holiday skate center dj that was the extent of my resume and i sent it into him the guy's name was dave christian and uh they called me that day and said you start this weekend Basically, I just started as a board op, just playing syndicated programs on records. Um, records, kids, look like this. <laughs> this is actually an album. It's a very good album. It's in rough shape. Sticks Paradise Theater. Um, but that was the start of my radio career. Did that for a while. The radio station changed to... Uh, WAVX, uh, The Wave, and it was bought by a couple of guys that owned the hockey team in Muskegon, and they bought it to put the, to have a radio station to broadcast the hockey team on. And I was part-time at the time, so they fired everybody but me, figuring now we're paying him next to nothing. He shows up on time, we'll keep him on, on the payroll. So I was there for a few years, Radio station changed to WLCS, Classic Hits. Um, that was a great, fun station to work for. Great people. Bill Spaniolo was the programming director. Um, very cool dude. Um, fun to work for. Easy to work for. Uh, taught me a lot about radio. Then uh, from WLCS, it went to management changed. I think ownership changed, format changed, and the programming director said, you're too young for the format. And I was like, 20, 21? And they went from a classic hits format to like an R&B format. So they fired me, and I went to work then at WPBK, got a job at WPBK in Whitehall. Worked there for a few years, left there for nine months, came back when I couldn't find a job in Baldwin at the grocery store, at any radio station. Matter of fact, I applied at the very radio station I'm at right now. So after the nine months in Baldwin, couldn't find a job, I went back to Muskegon, got a job back at the radio station I had left, WPBK, which at the time was Jumpin' Country, 97 Frog. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was horrible. Um, I mean, and... Uh, worked there for a few years, left there, started at uh, MRR 1017, went from doing overnights, over basically overnight, I went from the overnight guy to the morning guy when they fired the, the morning guy and the consultant, they had a consultant that uh, came in and said, hey, can you be here tomorrow at 5.30 in the morning? 
I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess. And so that started my morning radio career, which lasted a few years. Then I got tired of it, waking up at 4.30 in the morning. And moved to afternoons, and then uh, due to corporate downsizing, uh, after the radio station had changed ownership a couple of times, uh, my position was eliminated. And so I left there and uh, went to work for a friend of mine at uh, K-Rock, 94.1 FM, where I'm at now. Um, and other than a six-year hiatus at the top 40 radio station up the dial, uh, I've been here ever since. Okay. So that's, that's 34 years in a nutshell. Uh, oh, Chris Craft, the boatman. Well, my real first name is Chris. And uh, go back to uh, 1989, 90-ish, uh, probably 89, when I started working at uh, WPBK in Whitehall for uh, J. Ron and and Sharon Lee, they were the the management, and Sharon was the programming director of the country station in Whitehall, WPBK. And the general manager, Jay, um, great guy to work for. They were great people to work for, just really laid back, easygoing, fun people. And um, I wasn't on the air yet, and he said, what are you going to call yourselves on the uh, what are you going to call yourself on the radio? And I said, I'll just use my regular name. He said, no, you can't do that. I'm like, why not? He says, well, you don't want 300-pound women showing up at your door at 3 o'clock in the morning, do you? And I'm like, if they bring beer, sure, why not? <laughs> so we had a laugh about that, you know, and he's like, no, you gotta, you got to come up with a radio name. You know, everybody has to have a radio name just so they have a little, you know, anonymity or whatever. And uh, that's the wrong word, but anyway. Uh, so being that I spent a lot of my youth in the area, in the White Lake area, my grandparents uh, lived up on Old Channel Trail, forever for all of my youth pretty much until my grandmother passed away but so I was familiar with the area but hadn't been up there in a while um, and so I went took a look around you know and I noticed a lot of marinas you know and I remember fishing on White Lake and and I thought man I'm getting hungry I better stop into Dog and Suds and grab a bite to eat so I stopped into Dog and Suds right there on the river and I looked over, and on the side of the building, in big yellow letters, it said Chris Craft. It was a boat store. They did sold boat supplies and did repairs and stuff. And on the side of the building, it said Chris Craft in big yellow letters. And I thought, hey, my first name's Chris. I could change my last name to Craft. That'd be a great name for the radio, Chris Craft. A lot of marinas around here, boats. That'll work. So I went back to the radio station and Jay said you come up with a radio name I said yeah I got a couple ideas and I told him you know Johnny Ray on WPBK because it you know it rhymed and he's like nah 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 he's like what else you guys said how about Chris Kraft and he's like who do you think you are the boat man and I'm like yeah why not and he's like all right go with that and so I went with that and I just referred to myself as Chris Kraft the boat man and it stuck and here we are Chris Craft, the boatman on K Rock. <laughs> Still making a wake along the lakeshore. Sorry about all the erosion. I can put the headphones on. No, no. It's My okay. other job is uh, landing planes at the airport. That's why I have this. You know, it's not a, it's not a budding metropolis like Chicago or Detroit, so I don't have to do it often. But every so often, you know, the uh, Nancy's, Nancy's. Uh, Medical taxi flies in. That's what we call Aeromed, and it comes right over the radio station. So if they do that while you're here, you'll definitely hear it because the building goes. <laughs> anyway, there are a lot of stories I can't tell, um, and, and just to you know, just because I don't know if the statute of limitations is up on them or not, and I don't want to incriminate myself. I'm kidding. He was a great guy. Him and Sharon uh, hired me just on the on the word of uh, LT, you know. And LT said I worked with him at Classic Hits. He's a decent guy, you know. Shows up for work, you know, and and does his job. And so they hired me, and they basically said, "You have carte blanche. Here's our music. Here's the computer that plays the commercials. Here's the carts, whatever. It says just play the commercials, play whatever you want musically." They didn't have a the format was country music, and they played everything from Tennessee Ernie Ford to Travis Tritt. 
and everything in between. You know, Alabama to whatever. You know, A to Z. They played it all. They had it all there. And uh, Jay was an old Nashville guy, so he had a lot of connections with record companies. And we'd get, you know, the latest and greatest hit singles, you know. I remember Garth Brooks back before he was Garth, you know. I mean, now he's like this icon, but back before anybody had hardly ever heard of him, he's like, yeah, this is uh, some dude out of, well, I don't know where he is, but it sounds pretty good. Here, play this. And I played the 45 on a record. And I thought, man, this guy's going to be huge. He's going to be big. And obviously he was. Yeah. So it was fun to work with him. Um, Did he promote the first concert here for Leanne Rhymes, too? I believe so, yeah. Oh, and uh, that just reminded me um, of uh, a funny story I could tell you that uh, I don't know if people are familiar with the country artist Bobby Bear. Oh, yeah. Um. He played at the, uh, I believe it was the Helmet Theater at the time in Whitehall. Um, he did a concert there, and it was a great show. And Jay had his greatest hits CD at the radio station. And before the show, before he left that the day, that day, he's like, "Here, bring this to the show and have Bobby autograph it for you." I'm like, "Okay." And this was his, you know, from the radio station's music collection. He's like, bring this to the show and have Bobby autograph it for you. I'm like, cool. So we went to the show, met Bobby afterwards in the basement in the green room, and uh, partied like only Bobby Bear and J. Ron could. And that was that was a great memory. He autographed the CD. I still have it today in my music collection. Um, and that was just, you know, they were they were a lot of fun to work for and. Had a lot of fun working for him. I would walk past his office every so often, and he'd be talking to, you know, like little Jimmy Dickens or, you know, some other country music legend, you know, and just be, they'd just be reminiscing about, you know, the fun they'd had back in the day. And I'm just like, man, it'd be fun to meet some of them guys. <laughs> I talked to Charlie Daniels once through Jay, but just said hello to him over the phone. But that was, yeah. Early on, people that taught me a lot about the business, um, Scott Taylor, um, LT, um, in between Bill Spaniola, um, Dave Myers, um, you know, and I could just name drop and drop a um, um, good buddy, Bill Marshall. He was fun to work with. Um, uh, Andy O'Reilly, you know, I mean, just a lot of people that uh, that taught me a lot and were just generally good people to work with and and even hang out with outside of the job aspect of it, you know. So that's just, you know, a handful of people. Al Larson, he was a good dude I worked with. Um, Dusty Scott. Uh, yeah, the list goes on and on, but but those are just off the top of my head. I got I got to tell you because the, Oscar Osbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the the one time I remember is when I was working at KBZ and you were working there for a quick time. Yeah, I mean, brief moment in time. Jobs or something. Yep. And I was. I think I got the job through Manpower actually. <laughs> I think I got the gig through Manpower. Uh, it was Walt, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It was. But anyway, Walter. yeah, you were you were running the board while I was down at the Heritage Landing doing. You know, there was nothing going on in the afternoon. Uh -huh. and you were running the board, and you and I were talking back and forth. I think that was the most fun I think I ever had when we were doing that. That was that was a ball. That was a good gig. Yeah, was I fun. enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Jim Cox. There's another guy. Yeah. Fun to work with. Yeah. Yeah, good times, for sure. Ooh, going to put me on the spot. <laughs> My favorite radio station I ever worked at? Boy, oh boy. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it's hard to, it's hard to name just one. You know, there's, there's, Two or three that, um, and it more had to do with the people that I worked with and worked for than anything else. 
you know, because I've done every format under the sun, as you're well aware that, you know, you're you, in the radio, you got to be flexible. Um, but looking back, I would say the funnest, the funnest place to work for was probably, um, 1017 MRR when it was owned by Goodrich Radio Marketing because we it was it seemed like you know back in the back in the 90s in the mid 90s when I worked there there were a lot of concerts going on there were a lot of bands coming through Grand Rapids and West Michigan in general and we would get tickets to almost every single one and so every weekend we were going to concerts, hanging out with rock stars, going backstage, doing a meet and greet. We had a whole thing where uh, at summer celebration we had uh, um, this whole thing set up. We'd do a meet and greet where our promotions person, CJ, she would uh, lead the front of the line and I would bring up the rear just to make sure everybody got in and out smoothly and met you know the rock stars and all that. And um, that was... That was it worked well. I would say that was the funnest because you got to hang out with cool people and meet rock stars, and it was just you know, it was it was a blast. Yeah. So I just did my show live from Heritage Landing that day. Poison was playing. Um, some buddies of mine from from in town that were in a band opened up for them, and so that was really cool. Uh, actually got to interview the drummer from Poison during the day when they did their sound check and then he came over and sat down and chatted and uh, at the time there was this deal uh, the lead singer Brett Michaels had a had a like a fan club thing and as a member of the fan club you'd get to meet him at a you have a chance to meet him at a gig you know after the show do a meet and greet and so there was maybe a handful of people that were part of the fan club that were at the show that got chosen to meet him, you know, like maybe a dozen, I don't know. So they went back and met him, and then his tour manager came out, and uh, he apparently told her, go get the radio guy. Go get the, find the radio guy. Because all afternoon, I was playing like nothing but poison music and just promoting the show every break. Hey, we're live from Heritage Landing. Poison's here live tonight. Get your tickets before they're gone, blah, blah, blah. There ended up being, I think, like close to 20,000 people for there at the show and uh, I had the pleasure of going up and saying hi to everybody you know after Tim and Tom did their thing and um, so that was cool and then after the show for the meet and greet he sends his tour manager looking for the radio guy and that was me I had no idea he was down at the Omni and they had us on in the in the free weight room and he's down there working out and so all he's hearing is me talking about the show and he's like I want to thank that dude and so they did the show. After the show, he did his meet and greet with the fan club members. And then he told his road manager, go find the radio guy. And I was still backstage with, you know, doing the meet and greet stuff. And she came and got a hold of me. And then so I got to meet him and, and talk to him a little bit. We had uh, Rolling Rock together because he was, you know, he's from Pennsylvania. The band's from Pennsylvania. And he's a, then I guess they had a sponsorship. He opened up the refrigerator and it was full of Rolling Rock beer on the bus. That was fun. And he was sitting there autographing guitars for the Red Cross and whoever. And so that's another interesting, fun story. Um, as far as work environment, I'd have to say my favorite place to work is where I'm working right now. Because, as you know, radio can be very, very formatted, very, um, especially corporate radio, you know, they've got this scope on where you're going to play this amount, this many songs and you're going to do this and this and this and everything's by the book and da-da-da and da-da-da. Here, it's pretty laid back. It's a, it's a small company. I mean, I think there's like maybe 20 employees, if that. And we're like a family. It's like a mom and pop operation, you could call it. Um, and the people that own it are local people. Very easy to work for. Very laid back. I can play whatever I want, you know. And so that takes a lot of the pressure off because, you know, working in corporate radio, man, you had to do this, this, and this. You had to talk at a certain time. You had to back time to the top of the hour, make sure you were right at the top of the hour to meet the news. And there was all this stress. And it's like, ah! Now it's just like, ah! Kind of like when I worked at WPBK. Yeah, just 
you know, play music, play the commercials, and have fun. And that's how it's been for the past, I've been here now almost 10 years. Um, I was here for a brief stint, uh, 2002 to 2004, and then there was a hiatus, and then that's when I went to work at the top 40 station up the dial for six years. But, yeah, I would say my favorite place to work is where I'm working right now because if you, after this interview, if you drive around town, if you drive down to the lake, you'll know Ludington is a beautiful place. Um, love it here. I've lived here for almost 20 years now and wouldn't want to live anywhere else. And I've had opportunities, offers to do radio in other towns. And I'm just like, nah, I'm happy here and content. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that that went on off the air, that, that took place off the air, that uh, isn't suitable for broadcast or, or even to repeat. Just the nature of the business itself back in the day and how much it's changed over the years. Um, like I said, when I was working in Muskegon, we had concert tickets to every show that came through the area, almost, and, and somebody you know, somebody had to go to those shows, and a lot of times it was if you want to go, you can go. If you don't, you don't. Um, I went to see, uh, went to a concert in Grand Rapids at the Orbit Room. I think it was the Orbit Room at the time. Uh, that venue, anyway. And it was Ronnie James Dio playing, and uh, he was about this tall. He's about four feet tall, just a tiny little guy. Um, we had backstage passes through the radio station. We took some people backstage, and uh, they did a meet and greet. He was in the in the dressing room, and I was outside, kind of coordinating, kind of doing our whole thing that, that CJ and I did at these gigs, where you know we'd take a half a dozen people back there to meet the band. And um, a buddy of mine was there with his girlfriend, and she worshipped Ronnie James Dio, her favorite artist ever. And I only had two backstage passes. I was wearing one, and my buddy Jason was wearing the other one. He's like, man, you know, my girlfriend really wants to go meet him. Is there any way you could get her a backstage pass? I pulled the backstage pass off of me, and I stuck it on her. And I said, go meet your idol. So they did. They got his autograph. Uh, CJ, God love her, she came out and... She had an autograph for me, personalized, which I still have today. And my buddy's like, dude, that was so cool. Let's go over to the merch table. I'm going to buy you whatever you want. He says, pick a shirt. So I picked a shirt. It's a $30 t-shirt. Way overpriced, but worth it. And I still have that shirt today. And uh, matter of fact, I just wore it on Halloween because of the Dio, and it looks real scary. Anyway, um, that's, you know, that's, that's a fond memory I have. Um, there are some not so fond memories, but, uh, yeah, some pretty interesting stories. Partying with, partying like a rock star with rock stars is something not a lot of people get to do. And I still shake my head and think, wow, what a time that was, you know, and what trouble we could have gotten into. <laughs> Getting drunk with rock stars, that's, you know, that's nothing new, you know. And a lot of people have done that. But, and just to see that some of them were real down-to-earth people, just doing something they loved, I was in the, for lack of a better term, in the same boat. I was doing something I love to do and getting paid to do it. You're going to pay me to go hang out at a concert and, you know, meet rock stars and take people backstage to meet rock stars and just hang out and have a great time. I met both my ex-wives through the radio, <laughs> through working in radio, actually. Uh, those are funny stories, maybe for another time. Um, again, the statute of limitations, I don't know if, uh, I don't want them to sue me for defamation of character or anything, so I better not tell those stories. But suffice it to say, I met uh, two ex-wives through radio. Um, and I also met some very cool people who were rock stars and some very people that weren't so cool that were rock stars. And I've only got into the business because when I was eight years old, there was the, the uh, career day, and I thought that would be cool to do and get paid for it. I want to do that. 
I want to do what those guys are doing. Play music for people that makes them happy on the radio. And I've been doing it now 33, 34 years. Yeah. That's me, Ma. I made it. I made it. <laughs> All right. I'm All right, okay. man. That's one thing I got that you don't have, man. I did sunny for almost a year. Well, I worked in the building. Yeah, uh, I MRI, at, right? Yeah, I worked yeah. down the hall yeah. at, at, at 101.7. Um, but uh, that was after uh, Jim and Joe. Joe had left. They were no longer with the company. Oh, okay. But I remember listening to those guys thinking, man, they're having a blast. That yeah. sounds like fun. Maybe I'll get to work there someday. Um, they're still doing it, too. I mean, Joe's in GR now, but... Yeah. I don't know what happened to the... Biggins is over in Saginaw. Is he really? Yeah. Is he still doing radio? Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Nice. So. Yeah, those guys had fun. Duffy. I remember Duffy. Chris Duffy. He's... Uh, He's in Chicago now. I think at uh, WGN. I think he's their production guy. Did you ever work with Mark Frost at all? Mark Frost. He works at Sunny too. I just about the same time as those guys in there. Boy. No. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. But I just thought that was kind of a, an interesting, an interesting one to. I worked with him. Who? Dan Mesher. He oh. lives up here now. He, he worked at Sunny FM for a while. How about? Uh, Sweet Lou, Lou Sweet Mitchell. Sweet Lou, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sweet Lou Whitaker. No, Sweet Lou, uh, Louie. Yeah, he lives yeah. up here now, too, or further north. Yeah, further north. Louie yeah. does. He lives up, I think, by Thompsonville. Louie, the, so. the, the first station he worked at was the, the one that I was at um, at, at uh, Rock 95. Oh, yeah. WRNF. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, he was, uh, that was, he was just out of school, and he, he went there. I think I still have a t-shirt. Do you really? If I, yeah, I'll look for it. I'll and if I do, I'll send you a photograph of okay. it if yeah. I still have it. Because I still got a, I, I was just thinking about that, I still got a, a bumper sticker on my, one of my old toolboxes. So. Of Rock 95. Rock 95. Port when City I, ZFM. When my, when my dad passed away a couple of years ago, and I went down to Twin Lake to clean out his house, um, I went into my old bedroom, and I had... Bumper stickers from geez, Sunny FM, Rock 95, Magic 98, The Wave, MRR, all those things yeah. up all over the walls of my bedroom. I'm like, wow. 